I'm the trainer uh, for this big data technologies. So uh, I hope I'm audible and you're able to listen to the session and watch the screen. Can I get a quick response, please? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so today's session, as you all know, is intended for a demo. So before getting into the things, so let me give a brief introduction about Myzel. Then uh, we will start the session, okay? And I'll take a short introduction about all of you, okay? So as you know, uh, I'm the trainer for Hadoop and I've been working in Hadoop for the past uh, five years and I'm training on Hadoop since two and a half years. And I work, I work for a multinational company. Uh, initial, all my experience is in Johannesburg. Right now I'm in India and uh, um, I'm also a part of training and placement team in my company. Uh, it's part of branches across the globe. Okay. Um, uh, Hadoop certified, Six Sigma certified, and a uh, uh, lot of internal certifications in my organization. So I work for the various implementation projects, especially in Hadoop and Pack and Scalar. Okay, so this is some brief intro about myself. So I can see, uh, I can see Babu, I can see Vijay, I can see Priyanka, but I can see two members without the name. So can you please quickly, I can see caller four and caller five. Can you please edit and give your name, please? Hey, this is Naveen. Um, actually, my I don't know whether it's a problem with my system or at Koto meeting. It's taking a while for the app to download. Oh, okay. So I guess you logged in from the mobile, right? No, no, not from the mobile, from the desktop. Okay, okay. So Naveen, it will support. Right. It will support Mac, right? Or it will support only the Windows. Yeah, but no problem. But since you introduced yourself, I'll I'll uh, I'll remind I try to remind this. So caller four is Naveen and caller five, please. Okay. Since there are five of you, let us uh, you know. Let us keep uh, you know your uh, you know introduction for now. What we, what we do is I'll take you through the demo. I take you through the various components that we're gonna cover in this course, and at the end of the session we can. Uh, put for all your queries. Okay, I hope it is a good uh, fair ask, right? So we'll go that way. Okay. So okay. can anybody? Yeah. Thank you. Can anybody tell me what is big data before we start? Because we all are gathered here on this topic. So let us start with what is what does the term means? Big data. I'm not looking for any definitions. So whatever thing in your way, you can just tell me that. That the big data stores extremely like a very large set, like structured, unstructured kind of data. Yeah, exactly. Who is this? Uh, this is Priyanka. Oh, Priyanka. Uh, okay, so you are logged in as Priyanka Gali also? Yeah, I'm Priyanka Gali. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other any I'm other calling, definitions? I'm calling from phones. So I'm not sure if some caller also is showing up on me. Yeah, that is what. Um, there is some caller zero five and Priyanka Gali, but that's okay. No problem. I just want the, wanted the names. That's it. So oh, no problem. Okay. No problem. So, uh, so any other definitions that we can get for big data? So, good Priyanka, you have really got into some. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you you told actually a lot of you covered a lot of terms when I asked you big data, but I'll just give you a simple uh, definition. Big data mm -hmm. is a term that is describing large volumes of data. And we all know that we are listening to this term recently. Recently in the sense it has not, see the slide says it is used since 1990s, but I have heard it only before some six years from now. That is around 2013 or 12, that's it. So, okay, maybe the term is being used, that is okay, but why recently? Big data, when I say the term describes large volumes of data. So data is always big, right? So. Why, why it is used recently? So the data was always big, but we are when we are talking about data, we are we are just talking about the data that is captured. We are talking about digital data. 
right? So data is growing at an enormous rate. You see various uh, websites and uh, presentations are showing you that the world's entire data is last four, five years only. That means what data was always there. It was there in 90s, it was there before 90s. But the data capturing devices are becoming cheaper. Therefore, the captured data is growing at an enormous rate. When I'm talking about data, it is digital data I'm talking about. When the data gathering devices are becoming cheaper, just compare our mobile phones 10 to 12 years back and the mobile phone today. If you invest 10,000 INR, let us say the scenario in 1990, if you invest 10,000 INR, Indian rupees, you get a mobile phone which has got just a small screen, a small screen which can show you only the number and some memory which can hold almost, I think, 250 contacts. Other than this, there was only calculator feature in the mobile phone that was first introduced, right? So just compare and it was 10,000 rupees. And now just compare with 10,000 rupees, you're going to get a smartphone in which the storage is almost unlimited. And you can store a lot many things and you can install hundreds of apps. Have you ever wondered? See, I, I know 100% that all of you install app uh, one day or the other, you are installing some apps, right, in your mobile phone. When you install an app, app says the app wants to have access to your contacts, your gallery, and many other things. There are some eight to nine parameters minimum that the app wants to access have. Why? It's a camera app, let us say, or uh, images app. So it wants to have access to your contacts. Have you ever wondered why, why you should take my contacts data? Why it should take my gallery data? Why it should take my email and all this stuff? Do you think that the app company has a lot of storage? Uh, it has bought a lot of hard drives and now it wants to store the things? No. The date, and you are not the only customer for the app. You are one among the millions and millions of customers. So what does the app company do with your data? It will take your data to advertise. It will take your data to analyze. It will take your data to do various kinds of analysis, which will help them strategic business decisions. It will take all your contacts and try to advertise to, to the contacts. It will try to take your contacts info and tries to find out which age group is much preferring this app so that it can start advertising or modifying to the other age groups as well. Right? So this way, this way, the data gathering devices are becoming cheaper. I'm not just talking about the mobile phones. The remotes, the sensing devices, software locks, the cameras, the microphones, wireless, everything becoming cheaper. Now, just take one example. Talk. Uh, let us think about this uh, uh, CC camera. In the old, in the previous days, CC camera was it was like only in the jewelry shops, and the main purpose was to investigate if any theft happened. But now CC camera is in every supermarket. A smallest retail shop also has a, a, a CC camera. And okay, the thought of uh, the thought process of all the people also changed. Let us say I have a small supermarket, and the supermarket has a CC camera. Now let us say you are taking care of the data, and you go to the owner and say, "See, no theft happened for this last six months. Do you want me to delete the data?" Today, in the current scenario, 100%, the answer from the owner is no. Why? I never want to delete my data. Why? The reason is, the data that you have with you last six months, supermarket, uh, you know, data, CC camera data, is not just for investigating any theft. It can be used to make analysis. Okay? Which is very, very you know, which is very, very important. The reason is, with this data, I can understand customer behavior. I will try to know which kind of people are trying to buy what kind of commodities. I'll try to see which commodity I'm able to sell at the maximum and which commodities I'm not able to sell at all. Based on all this, I'll take decisions to improve my business. So the data majorly, when you try to harvest the data, when you try to uh, you know, collect the data, the main idea is to do analysis on top of it. But the data is growing at an enormous rate, right? So how enormous rate means beyond what? Data is measured, right? How is the data measured? Data is measured in the form of bytes. What is a byte? What is a byte? 
collection of 8 bits. What is a bit? Either a 1 or a 0 is called a bit. So now you see, I am trying to give one more definition for big data. When the data is beyond terabytes, I can call it as big data. So I can take this as one more definition. What is big data? A term that describes large volumes of data. That data which is beyond terabytes, approaching petabytes, I can call this this level. Beyond this, I can call it as big data. Okay, so what are the so now okay, so the data is very, very huge, and now you're calling it as big data. Will my traditional systems able to process it? What is traditional systems? That systems which you are trying to analyze the data before you know you introduce the concept called big data. So all the RDB systems like Oracle, SQL Server, the warehouse systems, Informatica, and all this, I can call them as traditional systems. They were quite happy. That means uh, they were very efficient when we were trying to process or store the data up to terabytes. Beyond terabytes, they were trying to face a challenge. Challenge means I don't say you cannot process beyond terabytes of data in the traditional systems, but the efficiency is becoming low. So I, I give one more definition for big data. That amount of data where traditional systems fail to process efficiently or store efficiently. When you have data, you've got two things to do. Firstly, the storage. Secondly, the processing. You just can't do any processing when you're not storing the data. And you cannot simply store the data. You cannot simply store the data, right? So you are storing the data only to process the data. Okay, so this is okay. This is a measure about big data. Now let us come to the most important point. What are the characteristics of such a big data? Now big data is characterized by three weeks. I would like to spend some few minutes on this slide because this is very, very important. And uh, it is the basic for our entire course. Okay, okay. Um, I can see just now join the uh, Ibrahim Mohe. Okay. Um, okay. Ashwini, are you there? The organizer for big classes, anybody yes. is here? Okay, yes, so ma'am. I, I can see Vijay. This conference will now be recorded. This conference will now be recorded. Hi, Ibrahim. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the session. We just discussed some two to three slides on big data. I hope you can uh, you can follow us definitely because this is a demo. End of the session, we'll, I'll take questions, okay? Yeah, so you can see these are uh, volume, velocity, and variety. What is volume? Well, I just, we just spoke, right? Larger volumes of data. That means how is the data measured? The data is measured in the form of bytes. So when I'm talking about volume, just give me a second. because I want to spend some moment on this slide. Uh, let me just go to one of my app and just tell you. So we are talking about uh, volume. Okay. Volume, velocity, and variety. These are called three Vs of big data. Okay, because big data is characterized by all this. Now, why they are called so? Let us see that. Um, I don't know how many of you know about this. In 1997, Yahoo has introduced a mail service which is called Yahoo Mail. Does anybody know what is the initial storage capacity given for individual mail account? Initial storage capacity given for individual mail account by Yahoo. I think it was 150 MB, right? Um, no, Naveen. It was less, lesser than that also. It was just 5 MB. Okay. 5 MB is very, very less. So imagine you don't, you can't even imagine your mobile with 5 MB now, right? So that means 5 MB is very, very less. I also had a Yahoo mail somewhere around 2002. The problem is 
you don't get new mails until you take a backup or delete the existing mails that was the main problem so nowadays you see good morning mail with some hd pics and all so if you get one such mail done you are done for the day until you archive that mail or delete that mail you don't get a new mail so okay but but people continue to do it no other go no other go everybody had yahoo accounts they tried it they used it for communication we got you they got used to deleting or archiving the mails in order to get new mails this continued till 2004 what happened in 2004 google launched its mail service which is called gmail the google corporation launched its mail service which is called gmail and can anybody tell me what is the initial storage capacity given per individual mail initial storage capacity given per individual mail account it was 1 gb just see this usually in in it or in any other field what happens is if somebody comes up with some innovation or if somebody comes up with some solution what happens is all the vendors try to work on the same solution they try to improvise it and sell it in their own name and maybe the pricing is different right that is what happens in it generally so what happens here is had if had if google corporation also followed yahoo it would have increased its mail capacity by 10 10 times or 50 times but you can see there is no comparison between 5 mb to 1 gb so what does this tell us google is not following any traditional methodology it is doing something new it is using some new technology it is very clear from these numbers right see 2004 when gmail launched with 1 gb of storage you don't believe within a span of one year everybody converted their mail accounts to google gmail and even today if you just randomly pick up some 10 email id is almost 9 are from gmail accounts or from google why because volume is such a important factor today i never remember deleting any mail for the lack of storage in gmail not required so why would yahoo has upgraded later yahoo has upgraded later nowadays it is giving more capacity that uh, you know a uh, lot of capacity to store your uh, files images and all this but why would i turn back there is no fun in changing keep changing the email accounts i have to inform all my contacts on that and google is giving me everything why should i so that way within a span of one year google corporation grabbed the entire market because of volume everybody see today these days it is 2 gb of mail storage 15 gb of drive right so why why would i shift to some other uh, you know vendor so that is how google grabbed its market how google is able, able to give 1 gb for single store single mail account and there are lakhs of mail accounts that nobody knew it that nobody knew it so okay everybody at that point of time like in 2004 it was like a magic google is giving 1 gb of storage let's go for it need not bother about deleting any mails that's it okay what was the second factor this is one that is the reason we call it as one important factor of volume how google is able to do that we will come to that solution very shortly now let us talk about velocity what is velocity the speed with which we try to retrieve the data is called velocity just i'll give you a simple example on this i've got a drive okay this is anyways a new system but just what i do is i hope you are able to see the screen what i do is i'll try to search with the keyword called hadoop in this uh, drive and i try to note the time taken i'll try to note the time taken okay so it will take lot of time uh, already 70 items retrieved okay let it take so almost 10 seconds it takes let us see this so more than 10 seconds it is taking let us let it search okay done search done i just got 77 items okay so it searched in drive d my result was 77 items let me make a note of it here so i got 77 items and it was more than 10 seconds but i would like to take just 10 seconds so let me take 10 seconds and it was searching in 500 gb of storage okay it depends on lot of factors i do agree now the same search i wanted to do in google let me do this in google i'll just search with the keyword hadoop can you see this 
what is this 18 crore 90 lakh results in less than half a second 18 crore 90 lakh results in less than half a second is it worth comparing and it all this is it is searching in some petabytes of information petabytes So, why my system is taking so much of time? I'm the single user on the system. It depends on a lot of factors. I do agree, it depends on RAM and other stuff. But above all, what I want to say is, this is velocity on my system, this is velocity on Google. On what is this velocity depending? This velocity, you know, the speed with which you retrieve the data, the way you retrieve depends upon the way you store. Just take a simple example. In your home, there is a room. You want to dump everything in that room because you want key, you, you want to keep all the things safe that is fine dump everything but what about when you want a particular thing you have to search a lot but if you keep in cupboard in racks organized directly you can just pick up that device that you require so searching time is a lot of uh, you know reduced a lot when you keep the things in racks but when you dump everything okay your your uh, data is protected but the problem is how do you retrieve when you want a particular thing so what do you what i want to say is my windows uses a network file system that means it uses a file system to store the data retrieving data from that file system is taking so much of time this is a traditional file system but google is not following a traditional file system it is doing something different it is storing in a different manner so this search engine was also like a magic and what about variety? I think one of you told already in the beginning of the session. What are the three varieties of data? We have structured, we have semi-structured, okay, and unstructured data. Unstructured data. These are the three varieties of data. What is structured data? That data which can be represented. Okay. Sorry? Somebody wants to say something? What is structured data? Is it RTBMS? Correct. So that data, which can be represented in the form of a table, I can directly call it a structured data. So RDBMS data, all RDBMS data, I can call it a structured data. How about semi-structured data? Semi-structured data? which is partially structured like xml files log files why xml file is a semi structured data xml file consists of tags let us say i have a configuration tag so during the time somewhere i have to find a closing configuration tag this is what xml file is right so here whenever there is an opening tag like name you get some info here like xyz after that you're going to have a closing name tag so this gives you a partial hint to parse this file. So therefore, I it follows a certain pattern, right? It is following a pattern whenever there is an opening tag, closing tag. So I call it a semi-structured file. Similarly, log file also. Log file contains a lot of information like date and timestamp. So for example, the log file uh, is like this. So you have 14, 11, okay, and uh, 2018, and followed by some timestamp also, uh, like 8, 17, and milliseconds, 2, 3, 4. After this, so if there is a lot of information in this file. But the thing is, it's going to have a date and timestamp, which makes it easy to, uh, you know, pass the file. Therefore, XML files and log files come under the category of semi-structured data. What is unstructured? That data which doesn't fall into these categories is unstructured. Like the PDF documents, the Word documents, the audio files, video files the social networking chats whatsapp chat i can call it as unstructured facebook chat i can call it as unstructured data and rest everything else falls into this unstructured category just observe on your pc also when you try to do a search it searches among the file names okay let us say i search just now on hadoop it is giving me the search result where the name of the folder or file is hadoop right if there is see uh, there uh, you know you have something uh, in the file name or in the content of the file that is text but if you observe google 
okay the search results are here very well but the thing is it is searching among images the image name is not hadoop in the image it is also reading the image which is telling hadoop similarly the videos so google is searching among all types of data my pc is not able to so that is that means google is able to give lot of capacity to store it is giving a high velocity compared not compared with anything else and it is supporting all the three types of information what is all this how would this possible so the suspense came to an end when google corporation released a paper in 2005 the google corporation told everybody that they released a paper saying that all this is possible because because all this is possible because we are following this file system which is called gfs i'm not here to talk about google i i haven't spoken about hadoop yet okay please remember we, we just did not come to hadoop this because i wanted to discuss this because for the base for the hadoop google is a uh, what do you say inspiration right so that is the reason we need to appreciate this then we can appreciate hadoop better so in 2005, the Google Corporation said, hey, all this is possible because the file system we are storing is called GFS, okay? So how GFS is different from our traditional file systems? Okay, let us see that. Let us see that. The original approach is following this. Okay, so this is our RDBMS. This has a limit. What do you do when your data approaches the limit? You try to take a backup. Is the backup readily available for processing or analysis or search? No. The backup is outside the system. So whenever you want to cut, you know, uh, whenever you want to retrieve the data from the backup, you have to make it active. Right? So this RDBMS has a limit. And when it approaches the limit, we are going to take the, uh, the backup. Okay, so this is what a traditional system is. This is a high-end system, high-end server, where you have, have to invest a lot on the licensing part, and the system should be a high-end machine. What is a high-end machine? There are various types of machines, right? Our laptops, we can call it a cheaper hardware. The servers, where the num what makes a machine cheaper or costlier? The cores, right? The cores and the, the speed, right? The cores determine the speed. The more number of cores, more is the costly the machine is. Less number of cores, the cheaper the hardware is. Memory and uh, RAM, all these are cheaper these days. So we need not tell that the machine which has high RAM is more costly. No, not like that. It is the cores that determine, right? Okay. This is the traditional approach that is fine. But what DFS is doing? It is not using any high-end machines. It is using a collection of commodity hardwares. What is a commodity hardware? What is a commodity hardware? Cheaper hardware. Cheaper hardware, like our laptops. We can call it the massive hardware. Something like 4 GB RAM and some 500 GB of hard drive. Yeah, I can call it as a cheaper hardware. So Google is using a simple solution. No need to buy any high-end machines. This makes your project economical, actually. So the collection of these machines, you know, we have cheaper machines and a centralized system here. There is no limit to data or anything else. So there is no concept of backup almost. Okay, so this is the Google solution. Now, when Google came up with this solution in 2005, what people did is everybody started working on the solution. Different, different vendors started working on the solution because when you try to work on big data, there are a lot of benefits. Everybody knows that. Google is one such example. So everybody started working on the solution. Okay, now what are the advantages of this? There are a lot of advantages. One simple example, they are anyways on the slide, but one simple example I'll try to tell you. Let us say, some three years before, I got some medical emergency. I registered to one of the hospital, okay? And the hospital treated me very well. So I got recovered soon, fine. After three years, 
I get the same complaint. So the thing that comes into my mind is just going to the same hospital because they treated me very well. The doctor there is very, uh, you know, uh, talented. So I, I believe that. So I wanted to go to the same hospital. The problem is it's been three years. So I did not keep the prescriptions. Right. So I rushed to the hospital saying, hey, do you have my data? I came here three, months, three years before. Normally you encounter this. They say, no, if you, are, if you have come in the past six months, your file is there. Otherwise, you are a new patient. Why? Because we don't have your data. Okay, at that time, I gave you all information. Where is all that? When you ask that, they're going to say, sorry, ma'am, or so. We are going to take a backup for every six months. And there is no IT team sitting in any hospital to retrieve your data from the past uh, three years. Right? So you are altogether a new customer, a new patient to the hospital. Okay, the doctor may or may not be there in the same hospital. So you you visualize something else. You are thinking your data is there. The same doctor is there. So they're going to treat me well. So you rushed into the same hospital. But the first step itself, you have to do undergo all the tests from the beginning. Nobody has your history. Just imagine. Just imagine if you rush to the hospital and the hospital says, just give you a mobile number or your username. We are going to retrieve all your data. Whether the doctor there or not there, the new doctor is going to have your entire history before him. That means how this is possible if you are not archiving for every six months. Okay, so how your system supports if you are not archiving your data for every six months? A system like big data supports. You need not store anything outside the system. Your, your architecture itself helps you to store the data, enormous data, big data. So this is one example. You see, uh, when you try to, uh, you know, shop in Amazon or social, uh, you know, e-card, any social uh, e-commerce website, you try to just shop them. Don't put them in your cart. Don't, uh, you know, wish list or add them as your favorite. You just do the browsing part. Whenever you log in into Facebook or Twitter, there you get an ad, personalized ad saying that things you are interested in are on discount. So even though you don't have any idea of buying it, you go there and buy because of the attractive colors they provide, because of the attractive discounts they provide. How does this possible? And you see, let us say I shopped for a pair of shoes today morning. I have to get the ad in a few hours. That means in the afternoon when I open my Facebook or Twitter. See, that means if I had, if I have purchased it and they are capturing the data, that is a different thing. I just browsed. So all my browsing data is stored somewhere and is processed in no time and is thrown like an ad before me in few hours. And I'm not the single person using Amazon or any other e-commerce website. How this is possible? Ad has to be thrown in few hours. If the ad comes after one month, maybe I, by the time I would have lost interest in buying that product or I would have already bought that product from somewhere else. So you capture a lot of information from various sources and you are processing it in no time. I understand there are a lot of other technique technologies enrolled in this particular example, like throwing the ad, uh, you know, based on your browsing history. A part of machine learning is also included, but this is not possible with uh, without a big data system. Data is stored in some big data technology. So what I was telling is there are n number of benefits in you know in various sectors like internet search, in finance, in e, e science works, in business in informatics, in medicine, in physics, in biology, in environmental search, because everywhere the data is very, very huge. So what people did, different vendors, they tried to copy the solution and try to work on their own solution. So as, as I said, everybody came up with a solution. Microsoft came up with HD Insight, Azure, Facebook came up with Presto, there is Big Data in Excel, there is Polybase on top of SQL Server, all these are big data technologies. And there was Hadoop. Hadoop was one of the solution to the big data, which was just to derive from the Google solution only. Different vendors started working on this Google solution when they released the paper in 2005. Among all the solutions, Hadoop was one of the solutions. Doc Cutting and his team, this project was funded by Yahoo and this person developed this Hadoop. Hadoop was the name of the toy elephant his son was playing when he was working on this project. He wanted to name the project and uh, he felt that, okay, elephant is a big animal. 
and okay, this pet name I can really adapt to my technology. After this, naming the technologies after the animal names also started. We have Hive, we have Pig, we have uh, Spark, and all this stuff, right? So this was the beginning. Google's solution was the inspiration for Hadoop. Hadoop was just a remake of Google solution. And they, I just mentioned you a lot of solutions for big data. Most popular one is Hadoop. There are two reasons for it. Firstly, it is open source. You need not pay any heavy licensing when you want to do your project in Hadoop. It makes the project economical. And secondly, the cheaper architecture. The architecture is not at all costly. It is using commonly available computers. Okay, so what is all about this Hadoop? Hadoop is basically, you know, let me just tell you. It consists of two parts. Storage and processing. The storage part is called HDFS, Hadoop Distributed File System. In for Google, it was GFS, right? Google File System. Here, the storage part is called HDFS, Hadoop Distributed File System. And the processing part is a model, programming model, which is called MapReduce. MapReduce. The processing part is called MapReduce. So we have HDFS, we have MapReduce. Together, it consists of the system called Hadoop. So when this is Hadoop, you know, you have one part which is storage, which is called HDFS. And on top of this, we have the programming model or the processing model, which is called MapReduce. And there are some components on top of this also, just like this. What are these components? Let me just tell you. We have uh, the storage part, which is called HDFS, and the processing part, MapReduce. Okay, let us come to the point, what we are doing in this course. We will understand the architecture in detail. So we'll understand the entire thing of what HDFS is doing, how the storage is done, how processing is done, everything. This is all theory. You try to know about Hadoop, that's fine. But why you want to learn Hadoop? The reason is you have to process the data which is on this particular system. So for that, you should know the programming model, which is called MapReduce. Let me give you some introduction, uh, some definition for Hadoop. Hadoop is a free software framework which can effectively store large amounts of data, and you can and you can also process large amounts of data on this framework. So that is called Hadoop, right? And one important thing is it is a Java-based free software. This is a Java-based framework. So this was developed in Java. So when you want to process using MapReduce, you should know core Java concepts. You should know Java. Not entire Java, just the core Java concepts. Not entire core Java concepts also, just object-oriented features of core Java. And if you guys are not from Java background, uh, I can take some two classes just to revise the concepts of core Java. So once you we know core Java, we can get into the programming in MapReduce, MapReduce in Java. But the thing is, not everybody can be Java expertise. Java programming takes a lot of time. It requires some programming experience and all this. That is what people believe in. So what they came up is, they came up with different solutions to process the data, which is called PIG. What is PIG? PIG is not a programming language like Java. PIG is a scripting language. The scripting is, uh, the commands are straightforward. You don't require any programming experience in order to do PIG. So we have PIG to process the data. So these are various options. You have MapReduce in Java, you have PIG, and there is one more component because we see you, MapReduce in Java can be done by Java team. PIG is okay, but let us say in Hadoop, most of the projects coming, uh, coming from Existing warehousing projects only. 90% of projects in Hadoop are migrating projects from warehouses. So in that case, where do you will get the developers from? Programming programmers. So we have got another thing which is called Hive and the component. Hive does SQL-like queries to query your data, to process your data. So what are we doing? 
we are trying to learn all this and do hands on so how does the course go like like i'll tell you you see like i'm explaining on the screen i'll explain you about the architecture and we are going to set up environment setup on all your machines all the setup will be done in the class only so once we are done uh, setting up the environment i'll show you practicals on my machine and you can practice them on your machines all the class notes will be shared to you after the class class will be recorded it will be uploaded in the drive on a regular basis so you'll be able to access this uh, you know right and the class notes will be sent like practical notes will be sent after the particular topic is done you can practice if you have any all the installations will be done in the class if you have any query installation i'm going to share one of the pc from yours and we'll do it online rest of this can parallelly follow us if not you can do later you can ask the queries okay this is how we normally do so we are doing all this hands on so here till here we are doing only analysis map reduce or bigger high we are doing only analysis part so when you want to do the oltp that is transaction processing this is a file system hadoop distributed file system will not allow you to do any transactions because this is only write once and read many kind of cluster write once and read many kind of framework let me not use any term like cluster we'll see in tomorrow's class okay write once and read many so there is no concept of updations or any editing so if you want to do that you have to you should have another database which is on top of hdfs which is called hbase this comes under the category of no sql databases we are going to do this hands on also so all this we will see and we'll try to process unstructured information through a component called flu apart from all this okay this is you know this is uh, one part the other part we'll try to learn one more programming language which is called scala java we are learning we are just revising the superficial concepts of object oriented we need not spend much time here but the basic is required that is the reason we try to understand only those concepts that are required for map reduce program but scala is a powerful language the most important part is the function oriented programming concepts in scala that is the reason we are learning scala not all the concepts the function oriented concepts it is practically not possible to discuss entire end to end of any programming language in our courses we are learning to that extent where we have to do our spark programming what is spark it is another programming model like map reduce it is becoming popular because there here we are trying to use ram here we, we are using this to store our temporary data so this is also growing at a enormous rate so the popularity so we are going to learn spark but spark framework is developed in scala so we will learn scala first that amount of scala which will help us to do spark programming and then we will see the core spark spark saving and other concepts in spark in in between i'll give you assignments based on the practicals that we have done so you can work on them apart from this i can help you in your resume resume writing i have a lot of sample resumes with me i'm going to share you all that based on that you can come up with your resume we can discuss in the class or we can discuss through my email and other than this i'll take a project related interview discussion most of you are not working in hadoop right or some people recently joined in hadoop and you want to gain more knowledge in hadoop you join this course that is how the category of students is most of the students are working and they wanted to shift their career to a big data technology so what they do is and most of them are experienced so what they do is they try to put a part of their experience into hadoop and they try to market themselves so whatever we are doing in this course will help them to clear the technical round no doubt about it 100% 100% you'll be able to clear any technical round after passing this course but when it comes to project related interview discussion the questions are slightly different so i'm going to tell all that in our project related interview discussion that will be the last class where i tell what happens in a real time in our project what is happening end to end and so on okay so this is an overview of our, about our course uh, for the us guys it is late so i had to wind up and they, uh, there are few things that we have to discuss in the demo also like the architecture of hadoop and all that part we can see in our coming class 
okay so now time for queries please pose your queries one by one so i'll be answering all of them let me know if you have any queries on the course content or anything else hey uh, this is prasanna right if i get yeah, it yeah. right yeah yeah hey prasanna this is priyanka i just have some questions so i just heard that the hive impala and all the back end runs on map reduce algorithm is it right and Correct. map reduce is like a bit slower than spark so it's better we you know program it in spark to speed up the process and all that i've heard yes correct priyanka whatever you heard is 100% correct oh okay okay and also i'm not familiar mostly with java so whatever you have mentioned two three classes should be good right to kind of understand yeah. the yeah oh, okay. just only understanding of core java is required uh, priyanka because in real time mostly we are not at all programming and map reduce but the oh, okay. as you said even the pig the hive everything is running map reduce in the background so understanding map reduce is very very important for a big data developer so mm -hmm. that is the reason that is the reason uh, we are doing map reduce first okay so only the core java that i discuss in the class should be uh should be enough oh okay so also you will be covering uh, uh, yeah. sorry yeah carry on uh, you you will be also getting free videos uh, java videos from the big classes but you know don't you need what i want to say is you need not spend much time in java don't try to learn everything from the uh, try to become expertized in java i'll tell you basic concepts that should be enough yeah mm -hmm. okay and you'll also be doing some lab sessions and sharing some real time examples for us to because uh, i'm not looking at a basic level at least at a bit medium level i'm looking at so i'm uh, so later on i'll be good to handle the project definitely uh, priyanka it starts from the basic level but we are doing the advanced concept also in all this uh, components so the practicals that i do i'll be sharing with you uh, parallelly i'll be telling about the interview related questions about the real time scenarios and all this oh that's helpful okay yeah and totally how many hours is the course um it will be uh, you know two months course uh, saturdays and sundays we are not doing so um, oh, okay. Roughly forty. Okay, and 40 also you are uh, excluding right, because US. yeah, okay. yeah, you are also excluding US, US holidays. Yeah, we will exclude holidays. See, when we are like a team, uh, you know, we are we are, we are four or five members. I cannot uh, stringently give you a timeline. The reason is sometimes the installations, uh, you know, fail. Yeah, no so problem. We, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Sometimes on those installations, and I have to ensure. that every one of you have got the install you know uh, installation done so uh, sometimes it takes time sometimes it is very smooth and sometimes if you all agree upon we can take a holiday we can take a break in between and uh, so like that we can coordinate okay uh, so uh, holidays uh, we'll try to see only saturdays and sundays other than that yeah few holidays uh, upon your you guys demand <laughs> i can i can take so yeah, we, no can, we can we can plan that way yeah so there is no fixed that this is a holiday this is not okay so sometimes if you all agree upon we can you know work on a weekend also so that that usually doesn't happen but just an example okay so okay, okay yeah and my other final question is so from the whole agenda i do see that hive uh, and all should be uh, like it's just an sequel that should be um, it should not be too complicated and pig hbase and all should be okay but the more thing that you will be concentrating would be map reduce spark right like In the whole of the course i i don't say i'm concentrating more on map reduce but this is the basic okay, no? for the entire project called hadoop the oh, on this okay. programming model only we are having pig and hive so i what i say is i am spending definitely some time on map reduce but uh, we are doing equal attention to all the other components as well the pig the hive hbase spark and scala everything yep, okay so anything else uh, i have a question uh, after the course is there any certification program i can prepare for uh, uh no babu actually uh, this uh, uh, big classes is not offering any certification for this okay just give me a second uh, i think uh, one second yeah uh, but the course completion this right uh, right will actually, now be recorded 
I think the uh, certificate will be given to them. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, yeah. You will be given okay. a certificate uh, saying that you have learned the course uh, from big classes. So from your institute, correct? Yes. The okay. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah, what are the time uh, timings you're looking for? Um, the session, session um, time. Session time. Uh, I think uh, it will be agreed upon. Class. This conference will now be recorded. I'll be sharing you the installation steps and everything, and we are doing everything in the class. So we we are setting up some virtual environment on our PCs only. You can you, you can call it as a cloud. We can call it, cloud is also nothing but a uh, uh, just a database like Hadoop, right? Right. right. And uh, so do we do, do we need do we need to have Windows or even Mac should be good enough? Um, Mac should also be good in. It will support, right? I don't have Windows computers. No problem. Actually, it will support. But maybe we, we cannot work on the VM player that we do on Windows. I'll send you a different version of the broker. But once your broker is ready, your operating system is the same. Okay. Anything else? So, so that would be so that would be Cloudera, right? That we will be installing. No, we are not installing Clouder. Clouder has got everything ready made, so we are not doing that. We are installing our own operating system. We'll install all these components one after the other. Okay. So when you work on this, you can easily work on Clouder or Hortonworks or OneOps, any other vendor you can easily work on. But it is almost 95% like Cloudera only. So you can take it granted that you know Cloudera once you do this session. Okay. So, okay, let us end it here. Uh, it is getting late also. So, what we do is we'll end the session here. Tomorrow, continuation. I'll tell you how the emerging of databases came actually. What is the concept of OLTP, OLAP, and actually how the databases, like how it started from RDBMS, how it came to warehouses, and then how Hadoop was into market. We'll just see that evolution of databases just for the first uh, 15 to 20 minutes. And after that, I'm going to start the architecture of Hadoop. Okay. So, tomorrow, 7 30 a.m., IST will be our class. Okay. Please log in on time so that we can begin the session immediately. Okay. Thank you so much. Good day and good night, Thank all you. of you.